Lucy, you come up with some some way or something to, to create this whole structure. This, this needs to happen as soon as possible because that this is a joke. So, I, so what would you suggest? I know our original, when I was talking to me about this, and this is when it came to be relevant, is that um, for each one of these data elements to map it to the components of a different field in an HL7 message, and one of them is the code system needs. When we were just calling it, um, um, terminal health module or something like that. And yeah, yeah. So this was our made up coding system. And, and originally we had envisioned it being uh, the, uh, the ID number. So each one of the forms has its uh, universal ID. And then the coding system, we were reusing the concepts just before they were already. Um, we wanted just to do something to them so that people were lazy and felt that they just, that this is how everyone was more important. And, and uh, you need to think about it before you start using it. And if you don't want to use the concept IDs, then we need something else. No, it's not that I'm not going to use it, it's that, that we should decide what we should use. I mean, I'd like to make a very good question to Paul and Sean. You probably have the most experience with being with Coding states, I don't really do that this morning. So yeah. you maybe have the best insights here. If we're going to start creating a one code set, what should we look at? How should we start coding with these, these values? What are the common structures used to do that? I think the best idea that I've heard in starting at the beginning of this meeting was to um, use the, um, the data from the models of some of the existing vocabularies and extend them with Rwandan sets. And so you have like a Rwandan extension to LINC, a Rwandan extension to ICD, and then put a validation process into where you're trying to get those codes included into the standard vocabularies over time. So you don't want to create an information model that's independent from the, the source systems that Rwanda is already committed to, but there's a, a stop off, there's a, a release valve that allows new codes to be added, assuming the, the, meta, the metadata model of each of the code sets. Does that make sense? That's really so any question concept, the clinical question would be like a dash or or whatever you want to call it. And then, then there's an internal process where the Rwanda is going to, in this case, Dan Green, who's my friend, and say, we need to get these codes included into LINC. That, that would be how I would do it. I wouldn't try to create an uh, information model that's kind of run across all the different codes because it doesn't, I don't think really it's possible actually, um, because they're fundamentally different um, things. And so when you have an open MRS code that doesn't have a standardized code, then you would create, you know, a blank RW code, for example, and then you create a list of those and then you see some process of tripling those out. Yeah, you know, I list those too, the ones that were being looked at, right? The ICD and the GCHR, well, right? Well, yeah, so, so Richard's published a document that says, here are the code sets that we endorse in the country. So inherent in each of those as a model for each of those code sets. So just use those and extend those, right? Group of Paul said just to put a little process in that too. So many of these likely already have codes existing, right? So there will be a reconciliation process. So before you over inundate the standards bodies by saying, hey, we need a new code for this, and instead of having them come back and say, well, geez, 90% of these already exist um, there needs to be a reconciliation process internally to say, ah, this way absolutely exists in one. So what, what's the link of so the is that uh, I think that, you know, that process is going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if we're going to get into a whole bunch of different process and, and subset of that, I think that's going to take a bit of a bit of time. Right. Um, uh, this has some of the She's protocol done to MCL. Yeah. Yeah. And MCL is yeah. full yeah. coverage. Yeah. Maybe we should try to um, put the Rwanda process something that we can do for the next phase. Use MCL for this, this first phase so that we have um, MCL as the base process that we can use at the moment because I think it makes the most sense. MCL, yeah. Are you seeing why you need a full time vocabulary version? I, I saw that one time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a whole series of tasks here, right? Getting internal consensus, 
um, reporting up new conventions to the rest of the world. Um, you know, it's, it's serving as an interface between the clinical enterprise and HIE, and then the HIE and the standard bodies. That's going to be multiple people over time, in fact. Um, but I actually think that um, I actually think that taking advantage of the inherent mappings of MCL and linking to that is a fine thing, but I don't think that I think that the right convention actually is to have somebody that's above maternal health. We're just working on one use case and we're set setting a national convention here. And you certainly don't want a code set. You can leverage it, but I don't think you have to start with it. Does that make sense? Okay, makes sense. I just wanna I think this is just um told me inside that um the uh, operationally the the most important code set is the one that identifies our observations. That's the one that we actually have to have. All the other ones are nice to have. In terms of what we publish, the code set for that is long. So we should I think if we commit to LOIC, if we leverage the, the mappings of LOIC in the material concept lab, they go and look to try to do some LOIC mapping on our own. I think we, we're not talking about a large number here. I think we can do it in relatively short order. I don't think that's, but I guess I would say we should say right now that we're going to use a single code set to identify the collection of observations. That, that's a must for now. We do need stuff. And, and I think we should do it. So, one part of it. Yes. We have to put a bit into T on the other thing to pack it up if we don't have it. So, we're going to break the T and then come back. This is actually a huge positive thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I have a shoe. I just think that it's because I had a shoe do something. I'm not supposed to. Yeah, it's a constant similar so I can do that if I do one thing. There, there is a hidden agenda here, by the way. If we go to one and we come to them with CD4 value and CD4 date, uh, they're going to they're gonna have a definite opinion about that. And they'll probably end up doing whatever the country wants. That's what it is. But the other key thing to decide here is that we're going to put that in the MCL so that when it is transmitted to the HIE, it's abiding what the HIE wanted to hear. So that this is saying that the edge systems are going to talk to the HIE using this degree code set. Not that they're going to say whatever they want to say, or we're going to figure it out in the HIE. Right? That is also something we're Right, because the MCL does have, like you pointed out, so many nice ERA there, we're going to have the light on this. And that's what can be sent. I just didn't talk them all over this. That's a big deal, too. That's part of the oversight you do that. Yeah, and I've been talking to the MCL people. They're very happy if I want to go and map them and get them back to the end of the validation as well. I mean, so that's a secondary level validation. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to do that for the one that the one set. And I think that I could probably do that in the other two weeks. Um, and that's with some consultation, taking time for consultation. Probably yes, I think it's a good answer. That's not, so. Okay, so we can I think it's unusual. Um, myself, I just want to clarify, is this, is this uh, can everyone agree that this is a decision we're taking to have the link and extend it to link? RW can have every um, data that is going into the HIE um, transmitted in blank RW uh, at the moment. Does that mean only we have to do this? Every data element that's captured as an observation type. Every OBX3. Uh, OBX3. Yeah. Not every, not every element. We've got other coded elements, such as individual sets or. Uh, you're going to have results of you know, have some of these things that are a bunch of choices. Some of those are going to be on the Yeah. Well, and, and those that are actually um, SDGs. The RBX files. 